Today in our 2017 Ram 2500, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you how to install the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs. Here in our test course, you will notice on our left side of our screen, as we go over speed bumps with the factory suspension setup under weight, we get a lot of up and down movement, which in turn puts a significant amount of strain on the suspension. On the right side of the screen, you will see the new airbags installed. You will notice as we go over bumps, the airbags will greatly reduce the strain on the factory suspension while providing a much safer ride while leveling out your vehicle when loaded and prolonging the life of your factory suspension. Here on our slalom course, with our factory setup, you will see a lot of body roll when loaded. With the new airbags installed, the ride feels much more solid and stable while greatly reducing body roll. That's what our bag looks like when it's installed. This is going to be constructed of a durable rubber and it's going to be double convoluted. And what I mean by double convoluted, how that separates from a, or how it's different from a single convoluted, a single convoluted bag is one single bag. This is going to look like two separate bags, but it's actually one with a steel band in the center. The reason they do that and why this is better than a single bag is with a single bag, what happens is when the bag flexes or when the, the pressure on the bag pushes down, that bag's going to flex out like this. It's going to squish down and push out. With two separate uh, areas like this, you get a lot less outward movement of the bag and more straight up and down. Each bag is gonna come with a cap on each end and the bag is actually rolled inside of that. And the reason they roll it inside of there is to help keep a nice good grip on that bag to help it last a long time. Our lower and upper brackets are gonna be constructed of a black powder coat steel that's gonna resist any rust or corrosion. All of our hardware, is going to be corrosion resistant. Each bag is going to have a 5,000 pound load capacity. However, keep in mind that does not increase the load carrying capacity of the truck itself. You, could, you have a range of 5 PSI up to 100 PSI per bag. Another thing that's nice about these bags, you can increase and decrease the air for each individual bag for all centered loads. Now this kit's going to be manual inflation. However, there are air compressors available here at eTrailer.com. Then you have your air fittings. It all comes with your kit. Uh, it's also going to come with this little bracket that you can mount on your hitch if you have one. Uh, there's different ways to mount it. I've mounted them up here on the bumper. Um, completely depends on your preference. Uh, it's going to come with these caps to help protect your air fittings from getting any dirt and debris in them. And also, and you want to make sure you don't lose these caps. If you look at the end, it's kind of split. What that is for is if you want to let the air out of your bags, you put that end in there and you can actually spin that center out. So you can actually take that out and change it if you need to, if one's leaking. Uh, so it's a, it's a really nice feature for these bags to have that cap with that option. First thing we need to do before we start our installation is we need to find out what our factory ride height is. How we find that out is we're going to do a measurement while there's nothing loaded in the back of the vehicle. We're going to measure from the ground right up the center of the wheel to the bottom edge of our wheel well. And we're going to do this in the front and the back of the vehicle. Right now we're at about 43 and a half here in the back. Here in the front we're at about 40 and a quarter. Now let's add some weight and see what it does to our vehicle. Now we've added about 1,400 pounds on the back of our truck. Let's go ahead and take another measurement. We're at about 41 and a quarter, so our truck has actually dropped about two inches. What is that going to do? That's going to put unnecessary strain on our rear axle because our axle is having to make up for what our suspension can't handle. Now our front measurement hasn't changed at all. But what happens when we put more weight closer to what this vehicle can handle or up closer to its limit? What happens is the front of the vehicle will raise up. It'll raise your headlights off the road, making it unsafe to drive. It's also going to make your steering light it's going to affect your braking and it's going to change how your tires wear. Now with our airbags installed, we've gone and added the weight back in there. Again, it's 1,400 pounds. Let's go ahead and take another measurement and see where we're at. And if you remember, our normal ride height was 43 and a half inches. When we added the weight the first time, before we added our, before we put our springs in, it dropped us down almost or a little over two inches, I should say. With our airbags installed, 42 pounds of pressure in there. We're backed up to normal ride height with the same amount of weight. To start your installation, it's a good idea to go ahead and remove your spare tire, give yourself a little extra room. 
Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our heat shield. 10 millimeter socket, we'll remove them. You're gonna have three bolts here on the frame rail. You're gonna have two right up here on this cross member. Then you can set your heat shield to the side to be reinstalled later on. We'll take a 16 millimeter socket, remove our bump stop. We're gonna do this on both sides of the vehicle. We'll have one bolt here, and then we'll have one right here on the other side. And you're gonna have two brackets like this, one for each side. You're gonna notice that the hole is farther from one side than it is on the other. The side that has the uh, more distance on it is gonna to go towards the back of the vehicle. And we're gonna be installing this with two large flat hex head bolts. These are gonna go in place of your bump stop. And we'll take a six millimeter Allen wrench. Go ahead and tighten that into place. Once you're done tightening one side, you're gonna repeat the process on the other side, and then you're gonna to torque those bolts to the specifications and the instructions. Now we're gonna assemble the driver's side bag. We're gonna pull this cap off the top. You're gonna to have two covers here on some studs, pull those off. We're gonna take our air fitting, we're gonna install it first. Now your passenger side, you're gonna install your air fitting second. Driver's side, you install it first. Then what we wanna do is we're gonna take the right wrench, half inch wrench. We're gonna tighten this till the uh, coating on the thread is completely seated inside the hole. Like that, we wanna make sure our fitting is facing in. We're gonna take this bracket We want this opening right here. It's gonna go over top of our fitting. So it's gonna sit like that. We'll add on our hex nuts on top of the studs. We'll tighten those down and then torque them to the specifications and the instructions. Now we're gonna flip the bag over. We're gonna have one single hole. You're gonna have a bracket like this. And then make sure that these flange are facing down. You're gonna see a, in the bottom of the plate, it's kind of a concave. You're gonna have a small Allen head, flathead bolt that's gonna hold that in place. We're just gonna hand tighten this right now because we're gonna have to set it once we get it up on the vehicle. We wanna make sure that it's gonna be straight. Let's get it like that. Make sure our plate can move on the bottom. And essentially, this plate, you can see how kind of the bottom of the bag, or the bottom of this plate, is kind of different on the side of the bag. This is gonna to be towards the front of the vehicle. This is gonna to be towards the inside. So we're gonna be, it's gonna be kind of like sitting like this. essentially once we're done installing it. Get our bag into place. Sit just like that. And it does make it a little bit easier if you can, when you raise the vehicle, if you raise it by the frame so that the axle separates, uh, it makes it a little bit easier getting your bags in. We're gonna take our two hex bolts like this and from the inside, we're gonna go through the top bracket on our bag through the bracket that we mounted onto our frame. Then we'll put a hex nut, or flange nut, on the outside. Get it, make sure it's straight. We're gonna take a paint marker. We're gonna just mark a line here. Just something like that. Now we'll take our Allen wrench, 
We'll line up our two lines and then we'll tighten it into place. Once you have it tightened, then you're going to torque it to the specifications and the instructions. And we'll see two holes on the side of your plate. We're going to be using this inside one. You're going to have a long bolt, actually two long bolts for each side that look like this. Go ahead and slide it through. You'll notice here on the outside that it's touching this line, this brake line here. What we're going to do is we're just going to bend this bracket up a little bit. Just like that. Make sure it's cleared. We're going to take this bracket here. This round side is going to go on the bottom side of the axle. Put it like that. Throw down the flange nut. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Then you want to tighten and torque those nuts to the specifications and the instructions. One thing I do want to mention with these, you want to make sure that you're tightening them, tightening them down uh, together. Do this one a couple turns and then do that one a couple turns. Just make sure they're done even so that this bracket isn't sitting off to the side. Now we'll take our airline tube. It's going to come uh, in a bundle like this. We're going to put the two ends together. We want to find the center. Once you find your center, you want to cut it in half. That's going to give your driver and passenger side airlines. Now I took my half inch wrench and I actually turned my air fitting where it was facing back. I didn't like how it was coming out this side. It was a little bit too close to this spring uh, and I really didn't have anywhere to go to keep it away from it. So I turned it like this and now we can go straight up to this factory wiring and file to the back of the vehicle where we're going to be mounting our air fittings. Driver's side, you can see I just ran it right to the inside of my frame rail, followed my existing wiring right around. I'm actually going to put my <coughs> little uh, adapter here for my air fittings on this side. So when I did my passenger side, there's a support brace right here that's welded onto the frame. There's actually a hole on this inside. Uh, it's right in here. I went through the hole and then out and then over the top of my spare tire holder. Existing wiring, I just kind of looped it up right here and then I'll make my connection right there. This is what your little fitting looks like. Your little bracket. It's going to come with zip ties. I'm going to zip tie it just like that. We'll pull off the nut and put on a flat washer. Put it in, put it on another flat washer, and we can put our nut back in place. Anything like that. Then we'll just connect our lines. When cutting your lines, you just make sure this is flat and not in a at an angle. Um, if you don't have a airline tube cutter, you can find one here at eTrailer.com. We can cut off our excess. Clean up our install. Now what we do is we're gonna put some air in, in our bags, test all of our fittings and make sure we don't have any air leaks. We've added about 70 PSI to each bag. We're going to take some soapy water and spray all of our fittings. What we're looking for is big bubbles. So if you see this one here, um, see the big bubbles coming out of it? That means we have a slight leak there. So we need to uh, figure out what's going on with it and fix it. Once you're done running all your lines, you've checked everything to make sure everything's working correctly. You can reinstall your spare tire and your heat shield and you're ready to go. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs on our 2017 Ram 2500.